Everyone, welcome. My name is Josh Foreman. I make stuff. I uh, write fantasy adventure novels. I make uh, shiny commemorative coins to celebrate said uh, novels. I make sculptures that I photograph and uh, make the covers of my fantasy novels. And in addition to all this, I make dioramas and other fun stuff for my YouTube channel and my Twitch channel. All of that stuff you can see above. That's my self promo out of the way. We have a ton of work to do today. So we're gonna start doing that work right now. So this is gonna start out with some grunt work. I thought I had the right size strips that I needed. I do not, so I'm gonna cut a few strips. So just take a moment. Also, hello to Clavicus and Quindy and Darth Abacus Bot. How's it going, Mr. Bot? I, I hope you're beeping and booping along, doing the, doing the things that make you happy as a bot. Okay, um, these strips, well, this is a, hmm, does it count as a strip if it's this wide? I don't know at what point a sheet becomes a strip, but we're gonna find out right now as I turn this sheet into strips. For those of you who are not familiar, this material is called XPS foam. Extruded polystyrene, if I got my math correct, that's what that stands for. 
you can find it at hardware stores. It comes in um, usually big sheets of like two or four feet by eight feet. And it's used for insulation. But it also happens to make a wonderful, wonderful crafting material. Okay. I'm gonna sanity check that this is correct. Let's look at the context under which we want to put this thing. We have this little tower that I've been working on for a couple minutes. Started at this, you know, like five minutes before the stream, and I feel like we're almost done with it. Uh, what I'm trying to do, I've got this kind of pattern slash shape language of these sort of crenellation teeth that come down off the bottom of each of these decorative shelf areas and so up here at the top I wanted to do something a little special you know top should be special um, and I was thinking of carrying the same sort of repetition but doing something a little different maybe following the shape of this arch you know so having longer ones and then they get shorter 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 longer 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 um, so yeah I just need to make sure that they're the right height and width. They're essentially square dowels at this point. So I have confirmed this is what I want and I will continue to do it. By the way, if you've seen people using um, this what is this called? Proxon hot wire cutter with a cut um, gate. Gate? I, maybe that's what this is. I don't know. Um, it's usually made by Shifting Lands, but this guy at Dungeons by Hand reached out to me and sent me a bunch of um, sample tools that he has, and I've been working with them, and they're really great. Honestly, I need to look and see what the price is. Um, Dungeons by Hand is US based, which makes it a lot easier because Shifting Lands is in the Netherlands somewhere, I believe. Um, although, I believe Shifting Lands also just got a US distributor with a most of their products available in the, uh, through the US distributor now, which is cool. Uh, but I'd have to see the price difference. before I made any recommendations one way or the other. All I have to say is that the craftsmanship and the um, just usability of these uh, dungeons by hand things are great. So yeah, that's all I got to report. Okay, I've got some dowels. Let's try to apply some dowels to our itty bitty tower. Uh, probably want a, a back toe. I haven't glued this part down yet, so I can literally just kind of like scooch it up and use that as the um, as a template, more or less. So let's just say we're going to have a, let's not do a middle one because the, the teeth down below do not have middles either. And I might as well follow the shape of the curve as well as the length, why not? Oh, you know what actually would be best? Would be to sort of, so I don't have to hold it in place while I'm doing this and it's not gonna shift around.
know, for me, new blade, this one is uh, caked in junk. No one wants a gunk cake. I don't know, maybe someone wants a gunk cake. I feel like that's something Oscar the Grouch would want. Oh, nice. Move the camera just enough to still not see me. Hi, here I am. Okay. So because I cut well, I kind of cut it at this angle, but since I snapped it, it kind of ruined that angle. But I think if I put it this way, I'll end up with the same. Angle, I just need to now cut it straight on this side. a T square on it, but it's so like small and fiddly, it would probably just roll away and I'd end up with equally as uh, wonky. And perhaps unwisely just kind of eyeballing the distance between these but since I am bouncing back and forth between both sides I kind of feel like um, the risk is fairly low that I'm going to like completely go off the reservation here you no know, it just occurred to me that's probably a racist term a better term. Uh, jump in the deep end. Okay, it looks like I'm going to need to cut a couple more of these strips, I'm guessing. Let's see. Let me do the limbo around my camera here. 
Ah, uh, Scoot Fairy. How's it going? Uh, Rax. Welcome. This is what I need. Interesting. Now I'm wondering, do I need to do like a final edge one? Because it's going to be right at the edge. I think I won't know, compositionally speaking, if I should do that or not until I get the big like uh, arches put on here, which I believe we'll be doing very soon. I said your name right, Rax? That's probably a first for me as well, so um, congrats to both of us. start uh, tapering down. Let's say we don't want them to taper down. Do I want them to taper down? Well, let's at least draw the line and make it an option.
reveal. Let's try it with one of them. See how it looks. And um, if it's bad, you can just make another one and replace it. slow with this because the hope is to be able to follow both lines on both sides which I cannot see at the same time sadly. I if I had a mirror I could do it because uh, they're at slightly different angles since there's a bit of a taper on the edge. so good. Okay, I think I need to see it on two sides before I can know actually. as uh, cleanly cut, but you got the effect in there. Cool. Okay. micro adjustments, that's what sanding is for.
much more challenging to get because it's so different on the different sides. Labor to each of these, but I'm going to start by numbering them. Embellishment up, up, up. All right, let's get my usual embellishment tool. What is this guy? Is this a weird test cut that I forgot about? I don't know. The world will never know. Big chunky boy. There he is. Um, probably don't want to use him on a, the very edge piece, though. hear the babies out there we had a nest of uh, finches in our door wreath which we thought was going to be totally adorable we've had uh, juncos nest in that wreath before we have uh, two doors on our front door and the one that we don't open has a wreath on it and so for several years not every year but for several years um, various birds will nest in there this is the first time we've had finches and we should have read what to expect when you're expecting finches because oh my god um so first of all with the juncos i want to say there were maybe three babies two two or three eggs and um there's the, the nest is a little bit larger and the eggs and the birds are a little bit smaller with finches there are there were six eggs that were laid over about three days. I think it was like two eggs per day for three days. And then when they hatched, 
Now, now this is the same with uh, Junkos and Finches. Like, the, the mom or dad or whoever will just, like, fly out of the nest and, like, you know, peep at you nonstop until you leave. Um, and uh, what we were not expecting was that when the babies hatched, um, the... I'm assuming it's the mother who does this. Um, one of the adults. I don't know. Maybe the babies have a way of doing this. But they just pile up their... Um, uh, just realized my camera is facing off into nowhere land. Um, they pile up their excrement. Let's, just, let's go with family friendly. Excrement around the edges of the nest. So it's like, it's a nest about that big. But then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger just with a rim of bird poop around the side. And it gets like squashed up against our door and all over the wreath. So as the babies are eating and growing and pooping, the nest is getting bigger to accommodate their bigger size. But it's getting bigger literally by just piling on crap. Um, so we get to clean that up now. The last babies just left either yesterday or this morning and now we have an empty nest full of biohazard to clean up it's amazing how ugly baby birds are and then when you know which which is one thing when you're just looking at ugly birds. It's another thing when they're surrounded with fecal matter. <laughs> it's just like, ugh, ugh. One of the babies just had a giant turd on its head for like a couple days.
think that one will leave semi-pristine. Although, because it's got this skin on the surface where it's pretty, um, it's got like a subtle horizontal line texture on it. But of course, where I sliced into it, it's got a different texture because it doesn't have that skin from the production process. So I'm going to see if I can just sort of um, reproduce that subtle horizontal line look. It's up here. I think what I'm going to do, because uh, I've got a couple of these different embellishments to make, um, I'm going to kind of give them their Mod Podge base as I go. So as I'm working on the next ones, these ones will dry. And then when these are dry, I can attach them. And we'll just continue that process. Need to be careful not to cover up my little uh, number code on the bottom there. like this green XPS foam it's um, I don't think it has significantly different properties than the pink or the blue uh, but the base color is just so much nicer for you know if paint gets chipped away or even just to cover it with other colors it's just a much more natural you know well 
Okay, so it looks like cucumber right now, but still way closer than cotton candy, pink or blue. Um, sadly, I cannot find it in my region in anything larger than uh, one inch thick, two by two sheets. As soon as I get my act together, when COVID is clear and I have my passport, I'm going to take a trip to Canada and see if I can find the mythical black XPS foam. I think it's only available to like industrial, uh, like big construction companies you have to buy it you know in massive bulk amounts but we'll see yeah kind of sea foam the really annoying thing i mean ideally there would be like a i don't know 70 percent gray that would be beautiful. Just maybe maybe a warm gray, 70%. So great. Because another really annoying thing is it's really hard to be able to capture this on camera. So for the YouTube tutorials that I do, I'm always like mucking with the lights, trying to get them so that you can actually see what's being done on them. Right. Now I think it's time for a very exciting process of getting the arms on. I don't know why I'm calling the arches arms, but that's how I feel about them, I guess. They look like happy arms on the tower, being all excited to take your dice. base down here all of our base belongs to us and then we've got our big old tower which is 
slots into said base. does successfully hold it in place, which I'm very excited about. And I'm trying to decide if I want to glue this down first, or if I need to attach the arms and then glue, because that's going to change some order of operations just for now. because I'm not, this may be the last time that I'm slotting this in place, so I'm going to make sure I've got adequate coverage for a YouTube video on this. There's a little bit more of a gap on this side than this side. But I don't think that's a terrible problem. Oh, look at that. I forgot to hit the record button. No, I didn't. I just couldn't see the record. Okay. Hey, Clavicus. one thing I need to do before I glue it down that is actually make sure this works as a dice tower kind of important so the idea is you put the dice up here uh, yeah up here came out the right place but we got to try all the different sides of it too Sit down there.
and here's how this works, is that you can have house rules that say uh, you can have one gate or both gates open, or the gate's not open at all. But if you do have, oh, you can't even see the gates. Okay. So if you have the gate a gate open, then if a dice escapes, you get to pick the number. And so depending on how often you want that to happen, you could have one gate, both gates, or no gates open. Let's try it with one and see if any escape. Not that time. I feel like they're less likely to have a... Um, A fast exit when there's more of them bumping around at the same time. Interesting. Why did I have two? Oh, there we go. Okay. Of course, it's going to be the four die that escapes. I mean, I guess that could be useful, depending on the context in the game. Okay, cool. Test complete. I'm now confident that these arms can be permanently attached. side of these arm things were designed to match the arch perfectly, and they do not. They're inset from it for some reason. This one is not only an inset, but it's like at a wrong angle. It sticks out here and goes behind it up there. I might want to fix that before I attach. Would literally anyone notice? No, they would not. But my inner critic would just constantly be screaming at me all day, every day. I try to go to bed at night, be like, remember that asymmetrical rock behind the arch on the dice tower, Josh? Remember that, Josh? What kind of a hack fraud would let that slide? Anyone else have that inner critic? Well, this one doesn't match the arch perfectly. It Well, it matches the arc perfectly. It's just inset a little bit, and that's totally fine. That feels like something an architect would actually design. So I'm okay with that.
The really annoying thing about this is that this is just barely tall enough where I can't like fully see inside of it without tilting it in and out. Well, okay. Now that I've said it out loud, it's pretty obvious what to do. Detach it from the base, that'll lower it a couple inches. Make sure there's no like huge gaps or anything. Don't look like That's what it looks like when you're rolling the dice down the chute there it goes. Interesting. Okay, I did not realize you're gonna see as much of the back wall as you do. It's got kind of an annoying texture to it, but it's also also I need to keep in mind it's gonna be up here, so it's barely gonna be seen anyway. I need to just let it go, let it go, something, 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 let it go, let it go, and be okay with it. Yeah, John, are, you, are we going to uh, mold and cast this guy for, uh, I, I can see that, put it in a big blister pack to <laughs> hang out on the wall. Okay. Uh, in case you're wondering why I'm dithering so much. <laughs> It's because I've been working on this for, um, I lied when I said I started it this morning. I've actually been working on it for months. And once I like get it all like stuck together, if I have to like tear it apart and break it to fix something or to like paint a thing that I wasn't anticipating, you know, etc. There's all these like weird little things that could come up. So I'm really, taking my time taking my time to make sure this is the right time to attach these and I think it's time to just sack up and stop being a rook and attach the darn things the dang darn things in here. spooky thing is that this is so well balanced. Look at, look at what it's balanced on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, on a carpet covered in garbage, it's still standing upright pretty darn well. So that's, that's testament to something. I don't know what it's a testament to, but something. You took my rook. It's fine. So I think the contact points are going to be really along these edges. So.
so nice. No giant globs of uh, hot glue boiling out of the side. It's always nice. Of course, that could mean that I underdid it, but I don't think so. It, it like fits in very puzzle piece like, so I'm not super concerned. Also, I'm going to be able to really nail it down back here. Balanced when that's not. This annoying little gap. I can probably fill that with um, some spackling. And I lost my arch. Arch. Here we go. Now it's some balance. I mean, what a, how was it balanced before? Was it just like, did I set it on something funny on the floor? I must have, I must have. Aha, yep. There's like a, a tiny little piece of scrap garbage on the floor that the front of it was sitting on. <laughs> that led me to believe I was a genius and was able to balance something so large. Uh, 
that sort of gap here and there, wherever they exist. You know, I have pretty amazing balance and it's totally wasted on me because I don't care about sports at all or almost any physical activity. I like um, bouldering, like jumping from rock to rock. That's fun. Uh, but there's not a lot of boulders around where I live, sadly. The best ones were at the bottom of the uh, waterfall that uh, you see on Twin Peaks. It's about a half hour from where I live. But they closed that bottom part off where the where you could go down and jump on those rocks. Real bummer. Uh, the only other thing I use my balance for is um, I enjoy pratfalls for whatever reason. I do less of them now that I'm older, but um, throughout the years I've startled and surprised many people by literally tumbling downstairs. It's just fun to tumble downstairs. And I could do it without hurting myself, so why not, you know? I am also actually terrified of heights. I am not comfortable around anything where one mistake can make you dead. That's super annoying to me. Um, that's why I don't like, I don't like heights and I don't like guns for the same reason. It's just like, why, why spend your time around something where one mistake and you're dead? I don't get it. I mean, myself to do um, to deliver some lines dressed as Link on a super narrow thing that's over this giant gorge uh, just because it was such an awesome shot for a video I've been working on and it is definitely something that I can overcome, but yeah, it takes uh, quite a bit of like mind gaming yourself. Being in a third floor apartment, like just being in a high place, even if you can't see the drop, does that still trigger your vertigo? It's 
just like the knowledge that you're up high. Because I do not have that. That sounds more severe. Stairs. Not bad for you. Thank you.
that has got to yeah, there's zero wiggle in there. Excellent. These guys are probably dry enough to put in place. down to put these on so I can make sure they're spaced properly. things we're going to have to work around before we attach these. Mostly some of these boss stones, uh, meaning stones that uh, stick out further than the others, are going to kind of mess up the flow here. But before I cut into the, these bottom ones, I need to make sure that the spacing is, you know, I've got these exactly where I want them. on the side, like all the way to the side, it kind of obscures this weird conjunction of all these different angles. Like I've never been super happy with this area. Um, it's making me wonder if maybe I want to do an even more like exaggerate, like a, maybe even a full all the way down to the arch. That, everything, all of these would be squeezed together a bit more. The thing that a little weird though would be that there's this arc above the arch but then this one goes all the way down it does not need to go all the way down you could just follow this to there let's see what that looks like
Oh, that's what I forgot to do. Cut this line first. that's going to necessitate cutting another strip from my sheet. This art seems to work more extreme than the other one, I wonder. All right, mods, looks like we're coming up on our hour point five. So I'm going to do my final spiel. And you guys could start looking for a cool raid. Josh Foreman is me. I make fantasy adventure novels. Uh, lavishly illustrated. And I'm going to miss all the illustrations as I flip through the book. Now there's a couple. Um, I do sculpting. I make cool collectible coins. All my socials are at the top. Check them out. Uh, you can buy my book on Amazon. And that's me. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I go off the air. I'll catch you guys on the next one.